Welcome, Minister Martin, to the Chamber. I wish you well in your new role as Minister for Media, Arts, Tourism, Culture, Sports and the Gaeltacht. However, it is of great cause of concern and disappointment, not only to me but to those in the industry, that tourism portfolio, an industry that in normal times contributes in excess of €9 billion Euro to the economy and employs over a quarter of a million of our people, sits amid six other important portfolios. Two weeks ago, in this House, I suggested pre-flight COVID testing. The DDA, a state-run agency, who are in Leinster House this morning with the COVID-19 committee, are suggesting the exact same solution. I'm delighted to see that someone is listening. And are you listening, Minister? And will you lead on it? I don't have to tell you, the tourism industry is on its knees. COVID-19 has, has essentially switched it off overnight. An industry that, while having its challenges, was set for another bumper year of growth. We were told projections showed record figures, growth upon growth, 11 million foreign visitors and something similar domestically. Even in the face of Brexit, things looked challenging, but we were ready. Brexit budgeting of €47 million Euro had been announced and on top of the €186 million Fulcher Ireland budget. That is what we spent last year. How are we going to spend that money this year? We have increased access to China. The US was set to herald wave upon wave of new market opportunities. The overwhelming success of the Wild Atlantic Way was to be emulated by the soon-to-be-successful Ireland Ancient East, the hidden heartlands, the spirit of Dublin and offerings from our friends in Northern Ireland tourism. As we know, marketing works 50% of the time. We just don't know which 50%. What happens now? What are your plans now? Where is the political leadership minister? What are you going to do about it? The Fulcher Ireland Authority Board consists of a chair and 12 appointed members. A list of highly eminent names, all experts with their given field and sector, and have and have to be commended for their contribution to the industry as a whole. But with a budget touching a quarter of a billion euro of public funding, where is the political accountability? Where are you, Minister, in this? What is your role? The emphasis has been well and truly placed on the international visitor, while placing the domestic visitor as an additional bonus. We have placed most of our eggs into the international basket. We find ourselves in an environment where we have not been cultivating a stay-at-home mentality in what appears to have been a concessionary solely on meeting the needs of the international. As we look to the future of international travel, in short to medium term, we look at the new trends emerging the continued uncertainty that the current pandemic has brought and the possibility that with ease of international movement that viral spread may become more and more part of our new reality. What is your plan for that? We must shift an element of our focus to that likelihood. What is your plan, Minister? Our domestic tourism industry has suffered greatly. Suffered greatly not only from the direct effects of COVID-19 and the necessary measures taken to lessen its impact, not only from the effects of mixed messaging of this indecisive government, it will continue to suffer unnecessarily from the effects of what could be interpreted as international priority focus. What do you think of this, Minister? There are people listening who need to know, Minister. There are 180,000 jobs at stake here. What is your plan? We need to know what your plan is. It is my belief that a new emphasis needs to be placed on true partnership model, where the strategies implied by our tourism industry are held more closely to scrutiny, where the measures of success is not solely by the figures at the airport, something that we will have to change, but also by the lived experience of the domestic visitor and citizen. How tourism, can, how tourism can we 
be supported to become part of our cities, towns and village communities, something that we have to date been laid lip service but can pay dividends. The current and welcome Fault Your Ireland strategy of encouraging visitors away from the more prestigious sites in an attempt to spread the visitor load has yet to materialise and the development of the much vaulted new and exciting visitor experience development plans, the VEDP, remain unfinished. There are many examples of success within our tourism industry at national and local level, Boyne Valley Tourism, Westport, Donegal, Kerry, for instance, and those responsible should be recognised and congratulated. The flow of COVID-19 information to the sector being solid and consistent. However, there are many examples of soft and easy goals being missed. Strategies pursued that have now been exposed and have found to have fallen short. Do you agree with that, Minister? The financial supports are not sustainable. Our tourism industry not, are not looking for a handout, rather a hand up at this time when it's needed urgently. And while short-term investments are needed, we need to readdress who and how we do tourism. At a time of change and flux in a new world, now is the time to create a single decision-making forum where the focus is on drawing together tourism, national and regional, the OPW, national monuments and the local authorities, and to work together to create a roadmap map for our beleaguered tourism industry. As a conduit of real discussion, which must take place about the future of who we are and how we present our story to the world and to ourselves. So my question to you, Minister, would you agree that in the light of the changing circumstances that I have outlined, that we need to grab hold of this now, if we are to have a tourism industry that will survive, it demands it.